this is Tommy Thompson and welcome to AI in Games, a series about AI applications and research in video games. Today, we're going to look at some really interesting research conducted in the world of Valve's Team Fortress 2. If you're not familiar, TF2 is a vastly popular online first-person shooter with a fan base and support that stems back to almost a decade ago. It's rare that an FPS continues to carry such a strong community. However, it's fair to say that TF2 has continued to evolve as a platform, with significant changes to this weird and eclectic shooter since its original launch back in 2007. But it's not the game itself we're interested in today, given there's no real AI involved in this objective-based online shooter. Rather, we're going to look at its community. Community interactions are par for the course these days in game development and modelling the reactions and behaviour of the community even more so. But what about how we identify or express ourselves within these games platforms? Cosmetic modifiers are the norm in most modern online games, from the calling cards and emblems of Call of Duty and Titanfall to the costumes and colour schemes of games such as Halo 5 and Overwatch. There's plenty of ways in which to express yourself within the confines of your chosen death-dealing avatar. It's with this in mind we turn to Team Fortress 2 and look specifically at the usage of hats, the first phase in a suite of cosmetic items that have slowly had a stronger influence on gameplay and more recent updates of the game. What can we learn about people who wear hats? Are there any correlations between those who wear hats and their prominence within the TF2 community? What about the type of hat that you're wearing? What does that say about you? With a little bit of AI research, we can find the answers to all of these questions. So let's go take a look. Research into Team Fortress 2 hat usage was conducted by MIT grad student Chong Yu Lim as part of a master's thesis. The focus of the work was to see whether the range of hats available and the rarity of certain hats, combined with the diversity of hats worn by players, can tell us something about the players themselves. So you might think, geez, this is a lot of talk about hats, but purely cosmetic items are an interesting phenomenon in online games given they often act as an expression of achievement that's not necessarily tied to a player's skill. The meaning or value of a hat ranges widely from person to person, given personal tastes that clash or meld with the exaggerated and often absurdist art styles of games such as TF2 or Overwatch. This melding of the player's persona with their in-game representation is denoted in the research as phantasmal entities, a blend identity between the avatar in a video game with the real-world perceptions and beliefs of the human player. This often leads to a form of projection of the player's identity in an often ridiculous and exaggerated fashion. Lim gathered profile data from 200 players on Steam as part of the research process, gathering information on how they interact in Steam forums, communicate on each other's profiles, as well as gather a stack of information on item acquisitions for Team Fortress 2. With this data in hand, Lim conducted a number of processing techniques and statistical methods in order to garner useful data from it. Now bear with me as we work our way through this, as it gets a little complex. Players are categorised by two distinct metrics that are used in greater detail throughout the research later on. Status performance and tie strength. Status performance is a relationship between player performance and avatar customization. This is largely reliant on establishing the value of items players own and the way in which they perform their self-expression. To do this, Lim gathered data from a third-party pricing site for hats to ascertain two key elements. The collected value which is the total monetary value of hats in a player's TF2 inventory, and the used value, the monetary value of all hats equipped across all of their TF2 characters. Players are then grouped based on their status performance using what are known as clustering techniques, a form of analysis that allows for grouping of data based on the features of the dataset, resulting in tight-knit groups or clusters. Lim adopted the k-means clustering algorithm to group players more accurately based upon their status performance. Meanwhile, Tie strength is related to the number of friends a person establishes in a social network with respect to their activity. Naturally, this varies depending on the social network itself and the nature with which connections arise. For example, the tie strength between Facebook and Twitter will vary significantly, given the nature of the relationship between friends on each network and the manner in which user activity is disseminated, with Facebook reliant largely on posting and commenting on one another's wall while Twitter is a broadcast medium. This is ascertained in Steam by calculating a number of key variables. The user's number of friends and the length of their relationship on Steam, posts on their walls and the walls of their friends, the amount of words exchanged between wall posts, 
the number of virtual items the player has on Steam, and specifically the number of items they've accrued through trading on the platform. The number of common applications, games that are shared among all your friends, typically those that you would play together. The number of positive and negative emotional words used in social interactions, measured through a form of sentiment analysis. And lastly, measuring the number of mutual friends and common groups amongst players, allowing for an understanding of social clusters that exist on the platform. This data is naturally rather coarse, so it's then tidied up by running a statistical method known as principal component analysis to streamline it for future calculations by reducing the data into key features it expresses. This allows for the data to be discussed on a social status level, rather than a level of specific data ranges and constraints, which is pretty difficult to do and even harder when trying to explain it all in a 10 minute YouTube video. With the status performance and social status identified, the next and critical component was how to understand how these two elements interact with one another. Can we predict the status performance based on a player's social status? This led to an analysis of how the clustered status performance groups and the labels that are associated with them relate to the social status markers. This required both sets of data to be appropriately clustered such that any relationships can be properly mapped. By clustering the social status data by also using k-means, two tests are made. First, to establish whether any relationship exists between the two clusters, followed by a second test to establish whether a specific social status could imply status performance. This last part is achieved through use of support vector machines, a form of supervised machine learning that can be used for classification purposes. In this instance, it's used to train an appropriate classification model for prediction of player behaviour. With the data acquired from Steam, Lim was able to identify a broad range of monetary value in the hats worn, ranging from hats worth nothing in a monetary sense to some well over $1,100. With subsequent analysis, the monetary value of hats can be attributed to three status performance clusters, as you can see in this table here, with players of low status performance on average wearing hats worth less than a quarter or 25 cents. Meanwhile, high status performance shows players on average wore hats valued at almost $200. Interestingly, medium and high status performance players had higher valued items on average equipped versus in their inventory. Meanwhile, low status performance players on average had more valuable items in their inventory. So what does that mean? Well, it suggests that players' interests and intentions have an impact on the hat usage, with low status performance players not really caring whether or not they're wearing something cool or interesting, even if they have them lying around. Meanwhile, high status performance place a really strong emphasis on wearing high value cosmetic items and showing off their bling to all their fellow players. Further principal component analysis against the data set of player profiles was then able to establish four characteristics of social behaviour that actually occur on the Steam platform. 1. Players can have high social interaction despite the games they have in common being single player games. 2. Players can have both close relationships with specific players as well as, in the context of Steam, many friends. 3. Players who typically trade with one another have a higher chance of engaging in social discourse via Steam, both before and after transactions are completed. And 4. Players fluctuate between those that typically post on their wall versus those who will focus on the use of the walls to maintain contact with friends. Now this all sounds rather common sense and is largely to be expected, but the beauty of it is that these conclusions are derived from the PCA analysis of the data. In other words, these characteristics, which sound rather nominal, are being reached from statistical analysis of data provided from Steam itself, which is pretty freaking cool. With this completed, a final clustering effort took place for player profiles to match those specific behavioural traits. The final results identify five specific clusters of players which relate their social status to their status performance and is summarised in the table shown now. It appears that the three status performance groups can be broken down into five player profile clusters, with group one focusing on low status performance players, meaning you don't really care how prominent your performance is presented online, through to group five which is exclusively medium to high status performance, where the most valuable and flashiest of hats are worn. In short, you could actually build a model for the relationship between how much people chat with friends on Steam and the hats they wear in Team Fortress 2. A final classification analysis using support vector machines was capable of predicting what groups a player could fit into with an accuracy of over 60% just by modelling hats and your Steam interactions. 
What's interesting about this type of work is the implications it presents, most notably that there are strong relationships that can be found between a player's real-world identity and social behaviour with their virtual identity in Team Fortress 2. This can be of real interest to designers of both games and social media platforms, ensuring they provide adequate technologies to not only enable users, but also to be wary of the effects of any coupling between real-world and virtual identities that can occur. It leaves scope for application of real-world cosmetic marketing to be applied and build parallels to real-world phenomena, such as limited edition or design apparel or building promotions with developers for cosmetic items. But as noted in Lim's papers publishing this research in 2013, there are issues of social impact and this type of behaviour could result in sociological issues such as perceived privilege or marginalisation. We've since seen evidence of promotions, exclusive content, and the community frustration occur in the likes of not just TF2, but also Payday 2, Killer Instinct, Overwatch, Call of Duty Black Ops 3, and many other online games. If anything, Lim's research foretold many of the current trends in cosmetic items in online gaming, because the research shows that this can have a tangible effect on players' interactions, and that ultimately, some players will place a great amount of attention on their aesthetics. Hi, I'm Tommy Thompson and I want to take a moment to thank you for watching this video and please like and subscribe to AI and Games if you could. This piece has been long in development and a difficult one to put together, I hope you've enjoyed it. AI and Games is proudly funded by its fans through our Patreon campaign, whose names are on screen now. Our sponsors help fund the research, development and production of this series, but also get regular updates on future content, outtakes, early access to new content, and most importantly the chance to vote on future case studies or Let's Play Diaries. With that in mind, what would you like to see next? Right now we've got three topics on the docket. The shadow mode of the 2013 reboot of Killer Instinct, the mechanics of Bioshock's Big Daddy, or looking into current research in Mario level generation and analysis. Be sure to hit the link in the description to cast your vote. Once again this has been AI and Games, thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon.